Morning all, I'd like to show you a very interesting King's Engine Defence game played in the Curaçao tournament of 1962, which we're looking at at the moment. Victor Korshnoy was playing white against Bobby Fisher, Robert James Fisher. He played d4. Victor Korshnoy, as we know now, has a phenomenal record against the King's Indian, and he sometimes uh, commented that he doesn't really think that much of the King's Indian defence in general. So let's see what happened in this game. After knight f6, c4, g6. Interestingly, Victor doesn't play for the knight c3 and e4. He actually plays g3, so he wants to head into the Fianchetto variation of the king's engine. And it doesn't necessarily need just yet a pawn on e4. That will be inhibiting the bishop along the diagonal. So this is potentially a very comfortable, solid position for white. Black needs to know uh, a good system to play against it. Fisher plays bishop g7. After bishop g2, Fisher castles, knight c3. And OK, on live book here, uh, d6 is a very common move, and c5 less so, 167 games with c5. But d6 is the most common uh, move here. If we just step back just one moment, though, just to make sure, because I'm a King's Engine enthusiast my, myself. So here, uh, castling is, is common. Also, d5 is another move, 1280 games, but castling was the most common there. So OK, castles, knight c3, d6. Now we see knight f3. And now Fisher plays actually knight c6. Often uh, knight bd7 is almost uh, just a pop as popular alternative statistically on my live book. So knight bd7 with the idea of e5, but knight c6 uh, is also being played very frequently. So 3085 games for knight c6, 3027 for knight bd7. OK, so knight c6 is played here then white castles. But the plans here, the most common plans in this position is actually a6 here. The idea of a6 and then rook b8 and b5, uh, where the knight's often helping torture the d, the c4 pawn. For example, a6, h3, rook b8. Just an example like this. Or if d5, there's uh, b4 or knight a5 here. So this is a plan uh, which can accompany knight c6 just to play a6 here. Another plan is bishop f5. And both of these plans are actually statistically a little bit more common than Fisher's move e5. So is there a real problem with Fisher's move? Well, Victor Cautionary plays d5. And after knight e7, I think this is a very good move here undermining the pawn chain quite quickly from white. White plays the move c5. So still refusing to move the e pawn, white is inflicting some structural damage, exposing d6 immediately really. Uh, so what can black do here? Let's just, just check if d5, if you might think d5 is vulnerable after d takes. I don't think that's the case. Knight takes e5 is better for, for white. The Fianchetto bishop is coming to the rescue here. So c5 seems absolutely logical. Fisher plays knight d7. Cd, cd, and already white has an uncomfortable uh, pressure here. This, this is slightly vulnerable. This next move, a4, is played. OK. So it's kind of signifying uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, that um, any play with a6 and b5 is not going to be on the cards. It's restraining potentially b5s even before the thought of b5 has occurred. Uh, a knight on b5 later attacks d6 without being vulnerable if it's supported by the pawn on a4. Also, white want to, might want might whites might want to play b4 at some point, maybe b5 and bishop a3, and the pawns are in front of the pieces. So a4's got a few things going uh, for it. Additionally, a5, of course, 
might be a problem for black. Trying to play maybe a6 later, trying to weaken black's control of the c6 square. So okay, knight c5 is played here. And now we see knight d2. And this knight is vulnerable to b4s. In fact, in this position, if b4, okay, had been played here, it's not, I don't think it's possible in this position because of e4, because of the loose knight. This this is, um, actually it might be knight d4, this might be okay for, for white as well, this position. There's a technical move though, knight d3, interfering with d4 here. But uh, white still would be okay in this position. Why well, it's still okay, even even this position it's it's fine. Uh so okay, so maybe uh maybe B four is indeed uh, a possible move, but uh knight d two is played. B four can still be played soon in this position. Uh but um here though we see B six and this is a bit of a defensive uh, maneuver in mind, but perhaps you you might consider a little bit surprising. But Black's weakness is often this d6. So if this knight is kicked back and the bishop arrives on this diagonal and knight b5, we we can see that d6 is going to be a problem. So interestingly, after b4, the knight actually fianchettos with knight b7. Again, prophylaxis against this type of play against d6. So this gives Black potentially a little bit more time. Uh, for his kingside play, but also any a5s, b5s, you might think that the knight can come back to c5 as well, if white uh, played like that. But uh, queen b3, and we see no no immediate uh, play on the king side here. Fisher actually plays bishop d7. Uh, let's let's just quickly examine f5, e4. I mean, this this is just another type of position. It's it's just just a little bit better for, for white, I think. So so, bishop d7 was played. Bishop a3. So white's getting on with his plan uh, to try and target d6 soon, and also without having played e4, of course, the, a knight can come potentially to e4 here to probe that d6 pawn. Okay, uh, is is there actually a concrete threat from white at the moment? Not. Not particularly. Uh, I think uh, there's always knight f5 as a defensive resource. This knight is actually quite a useful defender, basically, of d6. But we see uh, now a6, and this aims to uh, potentially play b5 to give the queen uh, a seemingly nice square on on b6. Okay, and you might think, well, could could white actually play b5 to stymie this plan to? to but does it give up the c5 square? And I checked this out earlier, and actually even this even this position would be quite nice for white. Um, D takes, there's d6. I mean, this, this is all possible for white, and very nice. It's winning the exchange there. And if b takes um, b6, and this, this, is, this is okay for white as well, this kind of position. Uh, so it is actually possible if white wanted to stop black playing b5, white can actually play b5 here. But Victor plays knight c4, and it looks as though b5 is is kept as um, a, f a threat potentially. But also there's an immediate idea that maybe knight e4 without even using b5 because there's always knight c5 just to probe that d6 with knight e4. And we see here now b5. Now this is a bit of a double-edged sword, this b5 move, because although it does give the queen uh, the b6 square, the b5 pawn itself is a bit of a liability. Uh, in fact, after knight d2, can't really get rid of this liability that easily. If, if, if b takes, this is, this is okay for white, white's getting uh, some access to sensitive squares. That should be, um, that's very comfortable for white. Uh, so we see queen b6. And it seems as though okay, so a slight mission accomplished, but the b5 pawn is 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 potentially put into question here. Is is it actually a target in this position? This next move, bishop b2, uh, kind of prophylaxis against black's f5 and e4. Is it, black doesn't really want to have this exchange. He'll be weakening his own king, uh, but he goes for this plan anyway. F5, 
and we see now the move rook a3 and it's and it's nice for white to be able to time a b just building up on the a file so it's potentially quite unpleasant this position uh, as soon as black plays anything like f4 the e4 square is just given away and the e4 doesn't look doesn't look too convincing either so white's white's a bit better here bishop h6 okay this is a potentially a little bit of an annoying move it does prompt e3 rook a c eight and now this this b five though is emphasized as, as a target with a b a b and now queen a two so white is owning this a file now this is, looks like very nice positional play and from a technical point of view objectively uh, white is clearly better now after queen a two who dominates that a file and there might even be um you know positional threat of rook a six and even rook c6 because the, the white queen's nicely on this diagonal as well this c6 square is sometimes important to use uh, something to bear in mind here so fisher played bishop g7 actually now trebling on the a file e4 which again is a little bit double-edged move well that might give you know black the e5 square one day for a knight this bishop exchange just weakens actually black's king potentially but uh, there's another thing about this position b5 is now shown to be quite vulnerable after bishop f1 even though okay e4 also shut down the bishop it's got this nice diagonal so b5 is a really bad target here uh, so Fisher's on the defensive he plays knight d6 and his position actually technically is drifting uh, worse and worse now uh, even though he's not material down at this moment uh, from an engine point is this is like one and a half pawns down here white controls if we look at it intuitively white controls completely the a file b5 is quite a vulnerable uh, target as well not only that the bishop exchanges would weaken black's king so this is not very pleasant at all and um, rook a6 forces this retreat queen b8 very very passive position for black probably not what fisher had in mind when playing the king's indian defense uh, we see now rook a7 but I want to remind you of something before we we come on to something very interesting that's going to occur in this game um, this idea of the weakness of the last move uh, for those of you who have seen the matrix it's like when in the matrix there's an amazing scene with with bullets slowing down and in chess you know sometimes seemingly aggressive moves you can sometimes slow them down and see the weaknesses and it, they're not actually that amazing so just just bear that picture in mind about weakness of the last move because something fascinating is going to occur uh, but um, think about weaknesses of the last move here so rook a7 why it's dominating uh, this a file and is coming down to the seventh rank now forcing black actually to exchange rooks and forcibly winning now the b5 pawn because look at this pressure on b5 there's there's only these two defending b5 these knights uh, haven't got any squares really d5 is fully reinforced it's a very miserable position fisher plays rook c7 and i guess he wasn't too optimistic about this position rook takes c7 queen takes and white now has the luxury of winning a pawn going up a pawn with knight takes b5 and not only that the light square bishop is often useful for black in the king's engine um, perhaps not so much in this position because it's like blocked in by its own pawns but uh, he has to he gives up the light square bishop if he doesn't well i think things would just get worse say queen b8 bishop takes and black's king is weaker now check this this sort of position is is very uh very miserable without the king's engine for chat bishop the past pawn here um b5 is on the cards and this looks extremely grim basically uh, so okay so fisher took on b5 maybe a kind of lesser evil move and now played at least he can play his knight to f7 to try and at least celebrate the use of the e5 square but he's accepting his wing his king is getting slightly weaker now after the bishop takes g7 king takes g7 now you know maybe uh victor cautionary was getting slightly optimistic here 
at luxury he's got queen b2 he doesn't need to use queen b2 check immediately and in fact it might seem rather pointless to play queen b2 uh, for knight e5 but that's still a nice position uh, for white the knight's not really if we have a quick look uh, the, the knight's not really threatening uh, to do much with that knight defending f3 so in this position you know um, in fact rook c1 or even knight c4 is, is nice for white um, but um, this uh, in this position Victor played um, a move which he, he, he shouldn't have. But, but before we, we go on to that move there's one more thing to note here that this pawn on d5, that d4 square can also be used for knight b3 to d4. This is a very powerful maneuver which would celebrate the c6 square which has been outlined by the pawn on d5. So knight b3 is also a nice move. Uh, even if it invites, for example, queen c3, that looks dangerous for the b4 pawn. Um, this could be a nice uh, positional pawn sacrifice here. Knight d4, for example, check. And you know, if the queen got access to the diagonal, then it's the end of white's king here. Uh, but this is absolutely crushing this position, queen a7, for example, like this. And you know, this this threat threat of queen takes f8 that would be all over. But um, here, Victor, maybe over optimism, over optimism with with the events of this game. He played actually bishop c6. And this blows away a significant amount of his advantage because actually black can play now just knight takes c6. Um, there's no check on this diagonal or anything. Um, so white uh, should just treat this as a as a pawn sack just to exchange off a pair of knights. If white plays d takes, white's still better, and he can still use this d4 square. So knight b3, for example, and still you know white's. White's a bit better here. This this knight uh, is going to be nice on d4 soon. It could at least at least parry the knight on e5. Uh, but a significant amount of black's problems are gone. But still, there's there's still this past b pawn to factor in. So white's still a little bit better there. But um, Victor Korshnoi, uh after the knight takes c6, played this move which um, has a certain flaw to it. So I want to put you back in that matrix scenario. These these fast bullets all slowed down. I don't know. Uh, I hope some most of you have seen the matrix. But but can you guess uh, Victor Korshnoi's move in this position? It's probably one of his, one of his most regrettable moves ever played against uh, someone of Fisher's class in the King's Engine defense. An opening which Victor Korshnoi's record is extremely impressive. But can you guess what he played? In this position, so white to play and blunder horrifically. If I give you ten seconds, starting from now, okay. Let's examine potential blunders in this position. If white plays queen c4, just to try and celebrate the the pin, this. This move might not even be too terrible, even if this this white is still getting um, the piece back, and you know this is not the end of the world. In fact, it's about equal there. That's not the end of the world. Queen c4, and we can try and improve on the same principle with queen c6, queen c2, using accelerating the pin. And in fact, here this, there's an improvement that new knight e5. And white could even play rook c1, and here uh, white. It's not. It's not the end of the world for white. Uh, in fact, white might even have a small, tiny uh, advantage here. Uh, but unfortunately, celebrating the pin on the knight here, we see actually um, in the game the move rook c1 is played, which which seems you know quite logical in some respects, and it also acknowledges that um, you, you might think well. With, with the knight here, there's no check on, on the back row, so knight takes b4. But if knight takes b4 attacking the queen, white doesn't have to play rook takes c7. Uh, knight takes a2, and black's a piece up. White, in this position, if, if knight takes b4, just, just uses the king on g7 with either queen a1 check or queen b2 check. 
and then just takes the queen. So okay, maybe that that was that entered uh, Victor's mind, but um, unfortunately for White, Black doesn't ha just have the resource Knight takes B4. This this move Rook C1. If we look at it, it's it's a classic weakness of the last move actually. That last move carries with it an upside. It's trying to celebrate the pin, and the downside is that the queen is slightly looser on a2. It's not protected by anything. It's an unprotected piece in its own right now. That weakness of the last move. So slowing down this bullet, apparent bullet rook c1. What do you see here now with black? If I give you ten seconds starting from now. Okay, Black just played. Fisher just played Queen A7, and I've got to say, I think Fisher was lucky in this game. I think he was going down. I think, but chess is a lot in chess is psychological, like controlling your nerves, controlling your optimism, over optimism. But uh, if you think a game's been going a certain way. It looks as though you know you're getting this view of the game as if you're climbing up this mountain irresistibly, and you're just accumulating more and more advantage. It seems to have a logical flow in this game that White was just progressively improving his position without any resistance. Uh, but Bishop C6 um, could have been uh, followed up without such a disaster, but it was followed up with this disaster. Now, just losing a piece here. With the queen unprotected being attacked, and that knight at its last breath is protecting the black queen. So, some kind of complacency crept in. But we're playing this tournament also in, 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 in Curacao in kind of incredibly high temperatures and humidity. So, okay, unfortunately, um, you know, Victor's caught, Victor calls plays tournament after this. I uh, wasn't so great um, in in later rounds actually, um, but um, okay, he's just blundered a piece. It's it's unfortunate, but you know this this is this is the practicalities of of playing chess. You know, even in in good positions, you've got to convert them to wins. So that over optimism, he just blundered a piece here, um, and what can White do? In fact, if if he moves if he moves the queen. Uh, the knight's really going to have a great time on e5 here, um, maybe even coming to d3. So he actually um, took the queen. Knight takes a7, put the uh, rook on the seventh rank at least. Knight b5, rook b7, knight c3, attacking d5 now. Uh, white's position is in ruins actually. Uh, knight c4. Okay, there's an idea of knight takes d6. That stops with king f6. I'm pinning this knight. b5. But now Fisher just goes for the king. He plays knight e5, and that f3 is quite dangerous. So he offers the d6 pawn here. Doesn't matter about that because rook d8 to try and get the d5 pawn. Potentially rook b6. Uh, now king, king. Very nice move by Fisher here. King g5. So not going back to be tortured by checks. The king is coming in, and it's fairly safe to do this uh, king king maneuver. If h4 check, um, I think strongest is uh, king g4. King g4 can be played here. King h6 should be. Is that okay as well? No, this would be actually walking into. You know, Fisher can't be complacent because knight takes f5 check. And this this is almost ruining the win for Black. This position not quite, but um, no King G4 here, and there's, there shouldn't be any problem. But um, so King G5 is played. Very accurate move, actually. So King G5, Rook A6, Knight takes D5. Caution is playing on a piece down. He must have been absolutely gutted. B6. Little final trap here for rook takes d6 b7 is it? So rook takes if rook takes d6 b7 
it doesn't matter actually even in this position it, it doesn't really matter this this isn't much of a trap because black can take here and th this position knight f3 is is actually um mating uh this knight controls the f4 square so with h4 king g4 uh, white's getting mated it's actually a fourth mate in eight here after queen h1 check h6 um, and there's going to be king h5 and knight g5 so th even that final trap is is not really uh, a major trap but uh, Fisher plays uh, knight b4 attacking the rook we see rook a4 rook takes d6 rook takes b4 and it looks as though b7 is dangerous but now here um, it's proved not not to be that relevant after check king g2 now knight f3 weaves um, a mating net again uh, so what's the mating net here well actually Victor Cautionary uh, resigns in this position if he did play b7 let's have a look check and again this this move this move king h5 here makes way for knight g5 as the threat of mate knight g5 threat of mate if g4 fg is is mate so what does what does white actually uh, do here uh you can only stave off can't really do anything it's, it's gonna be mated so in this position after the check knight f3 he's forced to resign any h4 check we just play this king g4 we're still mating with uh, rook g1 okay so uh i'm showing you this game because it actually shows uh interestingly you know a blunder based on perhaps over optimism and complacency so uh chess is a, a practical game it's not just a theoretical game uh, especially when played in huge temperatures and humidity so victor cautionary's blunder um is is unfortunate with um, the follow-up he didn't have to play such a disastrous follow-up to bishop c6 but uh that's what happened uh, okay comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much